Connection, a single word that defines humans as a species. From early childhood development till the end of one's life, the meaning behind that single word grows in significance. Without constant socialization, we lose our ability to communicate, and that lack of communication becomes a poison that can cause irreversible psychological damage. In Silent Hill 2, the town of Silent Hill itself calls the souls of the living to its domain. Though these people come from different walks of life, among all of them is a slither that connects them together. Silent Hill 2 focuses on James Sunderland, but there are two other individuals he meets along the way that leave a lasting impact on not only him, but us as the players. These two individuals are none other than Eddie Dombrowski and Angela Orozco, two connections James makes along the way towards his own salvation or demise. While James's outcome can be changed, the same cannot be said for Eddie and Angela, as after setting foot into Silent Hill, their outcomes were already decided. Perhaps to show us that the Silent Hill experience is subjective, but it is truly punishing seeing those around you perish before your eyes, and in most cases, you are powerless to help. Yet James in particular can be spared that fate based on the player's decisions. Decisions that are inherently created from the connections that were made along the way. Diving into these connections a little deeper made me realize that James, Eddie, and Angela share a common theme together. The theme that is known as tragedy. But tragedy alone is not what ties these three together. It is how on the cusp of both characters that James sits throughout the game which fascinates me. While Maria can share this theme as well, my focus surrounds these three in particular as Silent Hill served as an intersection between their souls. Now before going any further into the video, I would like to further clarify what I mean by connections. In this context, I'm not referring just to relationships, which for the trio is acquaintances at best. I am more so focusing on their psychological states. Naturally, this makes them different from one another, but also the same in some ways. Keep in mind, this is just a theory I came up with and wanted to explore, as these characters could have been put into the game to simply display how Silent Hill is based on subjective interpretation and nothing more. So with that being said, let us focus on Angela Orozco as she is the first character James meets and one of the last before the game ends. Taking a look at Silent Hill 2, we see that Angela is introduced in the very beginning. This is at a time in which the player knows very little about what's going on. Her interaction with James is a little strange, but nothing out of the ordinary as they both have someone they are looking for and they keep things at a surface level. The key takeaway from this meeting is the determination or ignorance James has from the start of the game, as he has no problems disregarding Angela's warning if it means finding Mary. The next meeting with Angela then discloses another side of her personality, a state that poor James should know all too well. Psychosis. Angela's mood swings from suicidal to calm and then fearful. All of these emotions are valid, however, her mental state displays signs of a disconnect to reality. James fits in this situation as well, as up until a later point in the game, he realizes he too was disconnected from the real world. Some may see this scene as foreshadowing for what is to come, but what always stood out to me was Angela's line. Are you afraid? I... I'm sorry. It is like for a split second, Angela knows not only her fate, but James's as well. This is purely speculation, but if you have not heard the saying, takes one to know one, this is a good example of it. This is further supported later on in the game after the fight with Abstract Daddy, in which Angela alludes to knowing more about James than we thought. The final time that we meet Angela serves as a reminder to James as well in which distancing oneself from the truth causes nothing but ruin in the end. Angela lost a small piece of herself she was holding onto somewhere in Silent Hill, 
and has resigned to her fate. What is key in this scene is Angela's own awareness, but the years of lying to herself created the fire we see around her, a fire in which she cannot contain anymore as her life, her emotions, her sadness engulfs her. This scene is one that many players never forget due to the impact of it. This event also serves as a reminder to James that if he continued on the path he was on at the start of the game, eventually the guilt would eat him alive and he too would resign to his fate. The in-water ending of the game displays that depending on how you have viewed him throughout the game. I see it more so as a selfish act and not one out of physical or mental burnout, but your perception may vary. So. What is it that brings these two characters together throughout their journey into Silent Hill? Well, let us begin with the common ground. Both characters were searching for someone in Silent Hill. Angela was drawn to Silent Hill in search of her mother, either dead or alive. James was drawn to Silent Hill in search of his wife, Mary. While this does not outright mean a friendship between these characters, it does open up the door for communication. Another common theme shared between them is their varying states of psychosis. Angela's ability to perceive reality comes in waves and is unpredictable, while James's state is much like a blanket that by the end of the game is ripped from off the bed. We know due to Angela's past and untreated mental condition that her mind grew to always expect turmoil. James, however, appears to be experiencing this for the very first time. The last common theme between the two is motivation or, in other words, the willingness to find their truths. Both characters had plenty of chances to turn and run or feign ignorance for the rest of their lives as they have done up until this point, yet both felt compelled to resolve what weighed them down the most. And even though they were both able to find their own versions of the truth, one of them at the very least will always die in the end, while the other is given a chance for redemption. Progressing through the game also leads the player to meet Eddie Dombrowski. However, this meeting from the get-go makes one feel uneasy as Eddie's hurling noises make for an unforgettable introduction. This meeting serves as a juxtaposition when compared to Angela's as Eddie's behavior is focused on denial and self-preservation versus a search for a missing loved one. This is a common theme shared between both Eddie and James, as in hindsight, we know that for the majority of the game, James has been in denial of his actions, and most importantly, his reality. But unlike Eddie, he does not outright or boastfully express this denial. James more so uses it to deflect from situations rather than to create one from it. The next scene with Eddie is equally as disturbing as we see a man who is completely unhinged. He lacks morality and only desires to inflict pain onto others. His excuse for doing so simply boils down to how a person looked at him. Considering the predicament James himself is in, if you think about it, how far off is he from becoming the next Eddie? While I do not feel as though Mary is innocent in this equation, James is without a doubt the aggressor. Once more we see a common theme between the two, but one was a result of provocation while the other was by self-initiation. While being severely angered does not outright make someone a killer, we know what both of these characters have done, but the biggest difference between them is self-awareness. The final scene with Eddie seals the deal on his ideology, but more importantly shows the bridge he could not cross to stop his own demise. So, what is it that makes James any different than Eddie? If one could kill once, surely they could kill again, right? But, due to James's self-awareness, we instead see him in shock by his own actions. He took accountability for what he did to protect himself and feels remorse for it. This is a feeling Eddie lost long ago and this event could serve as a reminder to James that he too is capable of taking the same path. While I get that these two do not seem particularly similar on the surface, a string between the two does exist. Remember Eddie's reference of the dog he killed back in high school? It was that event that triggered his own demise. From that point forward, he began losing all emotion towards the world around him and felt nothing 
as he would go on to kill again. We know at the bare minimum that James killed Mary, but what about Maria? I am aware that James did not outright kill her, but due to his actions, she does die multiple times. Now, let us spin this around a little bit. What if James felt no remorse for Maria's deaths, or even Mary's? Then he too would have headed down the same path as Eddie, with maybe a slight detour. Throughout life, we meet many different people. Some become friends, some acquaintances, some even enemies. Yet there are times we see ourselves in them and they see themselves in us. No two people are the same, but with some common interests, we create connections. But due to a person's genetic or mental dispositions, the paths they end up taking may diverge from yours. The person you were friends with yesterday may be dead and gone today due to a drug overdose. For some people, that reality is enough to wake them up from their own path of self-destruction, while for others, it makes no difference. This is what makes Angela and Eddie such powerful characters in Silent Hill 2, as the contrast they bring between themselves and James is fascinating to say the least. James is somehow able to maintain his sense of self throughout his journey even though he sits on the cusp of becoming the next Angela or Eddie at any given moment. But by the end of the game, he is able to see the roads taken by both Angela and Eddie which led them to dead ends. People die every day, but nothing hurts more than when it is someone you know, as it is that connection you made that makes it sting just a bit more. I often wonder how James would be as a character if he never met Angela or Eddie, as chances are he too would have been denied a chance at redemption.